What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about Norwegian rose mulling, a whole art form that I had no idea existed ever until today, a whole Norwegian cultural staple of art that I've never seen before. And I wanted to just spend some time and, and learn more about the history of rose modeling and some examples of some of this beautiful artwork. I've pulled up here some pictures of rose modeling just to start off. And a lot of it has to do with flowers, for one thing, a lot of flowers, and a lot of very flowing, very beautiful, kind of free-flowing designs that are very soothing, very nice, honestly. Um, it's almost like, gosh, it's almost like, oh wow, you can put it on a lot of stuff too, like uh, tables and, and containers and chests and bowls. And this is just amazing. It's very beautiful. It's like instead of carving, this stuff into the wood. This is like another way of kind of mimicking that with color, with paint, like giving the impression of a beautifully carved or beautifully decorated work of art or a bowl or something made of wood, except it's done with painting, which is just incredible. And it, it looks fantastic, honestly, and very Norwegian in a way, very Norwegian, very nice. So. I have the history pulled up here, and uh, what do we have? Rose painting, rose mulling, is a Scandinavian decorative folk painting that flourished from the 1700s to the mid-1800s, particularly in Norway. Um, rose painting was used to decorate church walls, ceilings. It spread to wooden items commonly used in daily life, like... Ale, bowls, stools, chairs, cupboards, boxes, and trunks. Utilize, using stylized or, ornamentation made up of fantasy flowers, scroll work, fine line work, flowing patterns, and geometric elements. Give rose paintings a unique feel. Exactly, it really is a unique feel. It's very geometrical. There's a lot of symmetry going on, but a lot of asymmetry as well. It's a fantastic, like, style. It really is its own style. That's the thing. Um, so some rose mulling paintings include landscapes and architectural elements. Rose paintings utilize other decorative painting techniques. Okay, okay. Regional styles developed. So in different parts of Norway, there's different kinds of rose mulling styles, basically. Um, what else do we have here? Rose mulling designs use C and S brush strokes. Yes, yes, a lot of like C shape and like S shape uh, patterns and flowers. That's like the, the overarching theme here. It's very cool, it's very satisfying. Um, and floral designs, subtle and vibrant colors, script letters, scenes, animals, human figures. Um, what else do we have here? Rose mulling became widespread as amateur artists in rural areas often imitated this folk art. Soon, strong regional styles developed. The th today, the three main styles are Telemark, Hollingdal, and Rogaland, named after the regions in which each is originated. Yeah, um, I could see a lot of people taking this up in Norway just because it's more accessible, like than learning to carve into wood. There's probably a lot more people, especially in the 1800s, that could maybe like do this painting style. It might be a bit easier to learn or easier to kind of find a place to perform this rather than needing like a whole workshop to do wood carving and stuff. And you end up with a beautiful effect at the end which looks as beautiful as some things that are carved. Instead, you do it with paint. So I can absolutely see why it became popular. Um, and it's, it's a purely Norwegian creation, which is just amazing. I found this video as well with uh, someone actually performing rose mulling live. 
it's uh, sped up right now so that it doesn't take too long. But I thought this was just fantastic. Like, I uh, this honestly makes me wonder when someone is doing rose mauling, do they just make it up as they go along? Because, like, look, look at this guy. He, it almost seems like he is so good at this that he can just freehand it. And the whole style of, like, these curved, free-flowing, kind of symmetrical, wavy lines and flowers really does kind of lend itself to expression. Like, you can really express whatever you want in the rose mauling style. Like, it's not trying to be hyper, super photorealistic. It's decorative. It's almost, like, abstract in a way, but it is, like, flowers and designs. So it's kind of abstract. It's, it's just this, like, amazing sort of uh, combination of a bunch of things. Let me see here. Yeah, it almost looks like this guy is making this up as he goes along. But somehow it looks amazing. <laughs> so, so I don't know how he's doing that. Uh, I don't know if that's actually normal or not. Um, I'm sure some people who do rose mauling, like, plan it out beforehand. But he's actually doing it as he, like... He's doing it live, and I don't see any, like, uh, markings like he planned this beforehand. Wow. And I just love the colors and the fact that this style really lends itself to... I mean, you can put it on a big picture like this, like a canvas, and you can hang it in your house. But you can also paint it onto a bowl or like a chest, or a closet, or, or whatever, and it looks fantastic. It's just a way to embellish and make anything more beautiful. It makes sense, honestly, why this became popular in Norway. Like, probably as a way to, like, make money, you could perform this artwork on lots of stuff and then sell it for a higher price. That would make a lot of sense why it became popular. Man. I mean, that's just awesome. Like... This guy actually did this live. Yeah, I found this little video. I thought this was amazing, how he was painting this in rose mauling style, like live, like <laughs> for the first time. And I also found some examples of rose mauling. Um, like, look at this. Like, it almost tricks you into thinking it's part of the wood. Because the flowing, beautiful flowing, crafty flower sort of style like, looks like it could be carved into the wood or something like that. Instead, it's painted on, and I actually love that it's painted because it adds color, which is very unique. A lot of time, you don't see, like, little paintings on wood because, I don't know, it's hard to pull off well, I guess. Uh, but this, this seems to fit wood perfectly, this style of rose mulling. Norwegian rose mulling seems to fit this perfectly. You can put it on, like, a, a little container. I don't know what this is. Uh, like a jewelry box or chest or something. And we have plates. A lot of plates, I see. And this is, like, a different style. This is clearly a different style. I know there are different styles of rose mulling, depending on the different parts of Norway. Kind of created their own styles, so you can kind of see where it's from in Norway, which is very cool. I wonder if there's a lot of people in Norway still practicing this art form th today? I actually don't know. Obviously, that video we watched is pretty recent. You know, there's someone filming it with a camera, so it's not from the 1800s. But I wonder how many practitioners of rose mauling still exist today. So this is a little different. A little more realistic, actually. Like, trying to be a little more realistic. Um, what else do we have? Like this bed where they painted uh, under the bed and on the posts and on top. That's super cool. Like the application of this art style is kind of endless because you can just use it to make anything more beautiful inside a house. So it has a very practical application, honestly. Um, this is on a boat, it looks like. Very cool. A boat or a bowl, honestly. Kind of its own style there. And you can even use the rose mauling as like a picture frame. Like here the rose mauling is around 
the picture, like a picture frame or something. Very cool. And a bowl. This really works well on bowls. <laughs> I, can, I can tell. And it works well on chests, too. Like, this is awesome. Like, this is so amazing. Like, I'm sure there's lots of famous Norwegian rose mauling kind of works of art and stuff uh, that exist. But, like, the thing is, in America, there's not really an American historical American art style. And so this is something that's, like, so unique to me, the fact that Norway has an uh, older, culturally, like, significant art style, rose mauling, to its name, whereas America really doesn't. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else about the history? History in Norway originated... Rose mauling originated in the lowland and rural areas of eastern Norway. Telemark, Valdrius, Hollingdal, Numedal. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing these wrong. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> Settestal, Grandsbrandsdalen, and other valleys. It came to existence in the 1700s. It's a 300-year-old art form. Wow. Wow. When Baroque and Rococo artistic styles of the upper class were introduced to Norway's rural culture. Oh, interesting. So this style was kind of created by the rural, the common people of Norway. When the upper class were doing all these fancy art pieces, the lower class was inspired to make their own style using paint to kind of decorate different things like bowls and containers and beds. Wow, that's awesome. That's actually a super cool history. No rose paintings can be traced before this time. So it's an indication that folk traditions within Norway went through a period of evolution. Wow, once developed, regional styles of rose mullen emerged, slightly different from others. Wow, so yeah, the different regions of Norway kind of had their own style of rose mullen. Yeah, this, that is such a fascinating history. And it's honestly such a unique style that screams Norway to me somehow. Like, it just fits perfectly. So I love it. I had not heard of this before. And I was just, like, rose mauling. And then I was looking at some of these pictures now. It's like, this is so awesome. Like, just having an art form kind of associated with your culture is beautiful. And this is a beautiful, like, form of art. Yeah, I just love everything about it. I thought this was so cool. I, I wanted to learn about it. And I, I think the history is great. And, and the pieces I found today are just awesome. So I, I really enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture, and stuff in Norway that I've never seen before or learned about, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.